We got 44 ambulances, 22. My law is supposed to be running. We got 17, 18 on any night because they're broken. Light rail. We are at the proposed terminus of said light rail. Who's getting out of the car, parking it here, leaving the car, and driving downtown? You know this, this light rail they're talking about from here to downtown? Five hundred million dollars. Is that the number one thing we need right now in Detroit? We need better police. The schools need improving. Pick Garbage up. pickup, the better ambulance service. We got a lot, lot of other things we could be spending that money on. Vonda, did anybody ask you for a light rail? No. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Live downtown Detroit, it's no BS news out with my main man, Stormy! Yes, sir. Merry Christmas. I do believe this is the beginning of the 12 days of Christmas, is it not? I thought the 12 days started on Christmas. I went to the Epiphany. Wrong. Wrong? Okay. <laughs> Maybe you're right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I skipped I thought, that part. I thought my Catholic education taught me something. The only thing I learned in Catholic school was how to part my hair in the middle. You know why? <laughs> why? Because the priest kept saying, this is not a sin, my son. <laughs> Oh, Charlie, oh. too early for that. Hey, man, you know, <laughs> love the sinner, hate the sin. You know what I'm saying? That's why I parted on the side now. Bad memories. <laughs> I've never heard that one. I fully appreciate it. Thank you. Of course, you do, choir boy. Anyway, uh, <laughs> speaking boy. of which, our elves are busy at the new secret warehouse in downtown Detroit packing those Coney kids. American Coney Island.com. Get them now. Get them while they're cold. They'll be right to your door. A dozen dogs, all the fix and proprietary sauces, proprietary chili, Vidalia onions, the buns, the paper hat, right to your door. Just go to American Coney Island.com. That's brought to you live from the American Coney Island studios here in American Coney Island land in American Coney Island. Detroit, Michigan. Yes, we're very thankful for them. Yes, we are. I like the studio. And, of course, everybody remember, Hall Financial's exclusive new Easy Start program is the best offer out there if you're looking to purchase a home, especially you first-time buyers. Now, listen, Easy Start can drop your mortgage interest rate 2%. They've already gone down about a percent. Hmm. Talking three right there. In the first year, and your loan for the second year will drop by another 1%, and your rate won't go up if the market does. Good deal. This saves you over 200 each month and thousands each year. When mortgage interest rates fall in the future, now get this, Hall's financial rate watching technology team. Oh, they're the only I ones know. with a rate watching a technology. A financial rate watch technology team will let you know it's time for you to refi and claim your exclusive benefits. Whether you're looking to purchase a new home or refinance your current home, you need to call Hall Financial first at 866 call hall or go to callhallfirst.com for that special five star service just for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know. Beautiful. Mm. Mm. Hey, so are we doing Secret Santa for, for uh, the No BS News Hour team? No, what is that? No. Mean? What is that? <laughs> My vote's no. no. If I get a vote, it's no. Secret Santa. All right, here it goes. No. God, such <laughs> scrooges. No. Oh. Why are you trying to put Santa out of business? Uh, I'm Jewish. <laughs> Hey, man. Whoa. Hey, man. I'm just kidding. I so just said I went to Catholic So's my Lord and Savior, bro. <laughs> exactly. And my great-grandfather. Oh. And Kanye. Speaking of, like, the North Pole, a uh, z hippie Jesus, baby Jesus, Zach, do we have a follower in the South Pole? I believe we do. We now, we now, uh, breaking news, the No Bullshit News Hour now has listeners on six continents, six continents. That includes Antarctica. And we will, you're a little late with that. That's old news, bro. That's old news. So really, we, we got a researcher down there? Yep, yep, we got a researcher. Uh, they're just trying to hammer out some of the final details, but we're good to go. Hmm, I wonder if it's melting. I wonder if Santa summers in, in Antarctica. Summer in Antarctica? Uh, it would seem to me, you know, you got a, you got a like, little beach shack in the south. Wait, which, which country don't we have 
I think we have almost all of them. Uh, South America? Yeah, sure. Why not? I want you to get on that hips. Okay. Because I know we're I know we're big in Kazakhstan. Build an ark and uh, get two two listeners from every country. <laughs> it won't take you that long. Okay, look, I want to try something. This is uh, the f the phones still don't work that well. Well, they work, but we don't know how to work them. But um, <laughs> ask us anything, any question on any public matter. You need some private advice. Call us at seven three four five seven three four five NB News. No bullshit news. Seven three four five NB News. Call us. You can ask us anything. Now, this is get, public stuff. Not private stuff. You can do that too. It's Christmas. Secret Santa. You know what we should do, Karen? We should have a office party. Okay, we don't have an office. Your house. We do? Your house. Your house. <laughs> okay, come on. You can have it here. <laughs> and right. and you can get that like that gas um fireplace in the backyard going and everything? Whatever you need. We'll can do that. We okay, cool. We'll cater. Yeah. Get a cater. That'll be fun. The pond is off. It's frozen, but you know, we can do that. That'll you, be uh, fun. You got a pool over there? <laughs> have a pond a pond good enough pond that's good for you yeah you get a swamp yeah. that, that, that'd be good for you Someone will be in there. <laughs> yeah. me <laughs> yeah you, you, i like to wallow put that mask back on you're still positive <laughs> oh. <laughs> very uh, much so all right look man you know b before we get going into the great american ripoff that is the state of michigan i i just now elon musk with matt taibbi friend of the show no right-wing conservative right long time rolling stone writer best Good reporter i like great him. Mm -hmm. so he's been given access to the twitter emails for all the people that uh, elon musk yeah. canned and so it becomes obvious twitter is working with politicians especially especially on the uh, on the left the biden campaign to scrub stories like hunter biden laptop and whatever on there right Th that's not even an important story unless it's Biden himself taking some money from Hunter Biden. Sure, sure. Work, right? I, I honestly feel like, why not investigate it? I have no problem with them investigating it, but, you know, the Twitter stuff seems to be all about his nude pics and, you know, all the salacious fun stuff. Mm -hmm. But remember, it was like it was a Soviet, I mean, Russian operatives. It was, it was misinformation. Oh, yeah. It had all the earmarks of Russian disinformation, and there's a lot of egg on their face, a ton of egg on Twitter. I mean, Twitter has made so many missteps. And yet, everyone still uses them, it seems. And everybody's ugly on pre, there. Pre-Elon and post-Elon. Uh, all right, so, so we also know from this weekend that um, they censored scientific and public policy questions yes. on, on yeah. COVID-19. Mm -hmm. They did that to us. Mm -hmm. And so did Facebook. They did. Yeah. And at least Twitter says, uh, well, I, I, I read it on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Elon Musk is going to give us all a dossier on our own accounts. And I would like to have that on Facebook. I would like Elon Musk to buy Facebook mm -hmm. because what's going on? What do you mean by a dossier? Like, uh, look, here's what we know. Here's how we put our fingers on your account. Okay. So apparently that's going to be sent to everybody. Okay. But you notice, like, and again, we're not some right-wing whack job. We're not some liberal goofballs. But the minute that we started challenging the governor of this state on their COVID policies and on what was going on in the nursing homes, all of a sudden, our viewership's dying off. We're getting labels put on us, right? I really believe a lot of that is from people that maybe don't like you or don't like what you were saying and flagging it. And they've got to stop letting computers go, ooh, someone didn't like this. Let's bury it. Well, is, they, I, I, there's got to be a, there's got to be better recourse. I mean, but, but at, the, at the same time, this is the, this is the whole issue with both platforms is that people were complaining if there was something violent or if there was a red flag sure. that people didn't pick up on. So it can't be both things. You're right. Like if they're going to monitor it, then they're going to monitor it the way that they want to do because it is their platform or it's going to just be every man for himself, but it can't be both ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just because you don't like what's being said doesn't mean it's false information. Exactly. But that's how everybody feels. Anything that they disagree with, they say it's misinformation. I mean, whatever it is, whether it was about the vaccine, whether it's politics, whether it's anything, if you don't agree with it, then it's wrong. And, and that's become the American way. And it's a it's a fucking pity. And Mark, we were talking earlier this morning. You said you don't have a problem with it because it's a private company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in in regards to, I feel like a lot of traditional media does the same thing. I mean, they set their agenda. I think the difference is in Twitter and Facebook is that agenda is felt by everybody because they're all the contributors. They're the commodity of it. 
but it's a private company. Does it need oversight? 100%. What does that look like? I have no idea. There's a lot in there where you just said, yeah, number one, it's true of many years in mainstream media. That happens all the time. Yeah. That's, uh, that's fucking Fakana or Duggan and, and their creeps <laughs> seen getting it. in a limo, driving over to the TV station and complaining and getting shit pulled. It's the same with, with Gilbert. Yeah. Here in town. He, he, you know, he did that. I did an investigation on his mortgages. And before I even got it done, it was gone. Yeah. Uh, but Joe, powerful. don't forget, Dan Gilbert owns the building that houses our two daily newspapers. And there are cameras in the newsroom. <laughs> I mean, everybody forgot about that. Yep. And some, some bullshit excuse like those cameras are just for security. Mm. I don't know, man. I know, you're not having your camera over my, my keyboard. Who's security? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, the other thing about uh, the Twitter situation here is, yeah, you do what you want, I guess, but now you've got the FBI, mm. right, uh, other security apparatus in, in America meeting with them? Isn't that over the line? Isn't there a First Amendment issue there? Yeah, I'm surprised Twitter would allow it to tell you the truth. I mean, look at look at the battle uh, Apple's having with the FBI because of how secure they're making their stuff. And the FBI is like, well, wait a second. I, but once again, like Karen said, you can't have it all one way or the other. And I have no idea what their balance lies. Yeah, but, but, but the thing about it is, is that you've created a platform for people to express themselves. So, but, and this is what I wrote about and got in trouble for it. But if it's your platform, you can, and it is privately held, then you have the ability, whether or not it's a right, to influence or control the stream of information and the kind of information. So, I mean, what, what do you want? Do you want the opportunity to express yourself, uh, but only be in the, in the room with people that agree with you? I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a slippery slope. And, uh, you know, like, well, I'd be on all the major cable shows. I've been on them all, right? Mm -hmm. You know, CNN's liking me and retweeting when I'm telling you from Cobo Hall that there was no 150,000 ballots trucked in there. But then again, when I start looking into our old people and what is the true COVID damage, all of a sudden I'm gone. Exactly. Right? I'm not on CNN anymore. And then what's weird? Chris Cuomo gets booted off of CNN. He's on some, I don't know, some gutter fucking station. I don't know where he's at. What's News it? Nation. Is it big? It's it's not that big. It's growing. It's the old WGN. I got to tell you, it it's it's not that bad. It's just nobody knows about it. Well, nobody then should I go it. on it? Because the guy won't leave me alone. Yes, you should. I'm like, I'm busy tonight. They're like, well, send a mobile studio over to your house. I'm like, a mobile studio over to my house. Oh, well, then absolutely go Pick on. Pick me up at the bar, dude. <laughs> What'd you say, Karen? I said I told him to go. Now Mark is seconding that. They'll ask Hippie Jesus, and then you've got a quorum. You should go. I already tried getting Chris to come on the show. And I didn't know. Yeah, he ignored me. I didn't know. Oh, but now, now that we go to the border and we do some stuff, okay, but okay, I'll do it. Yeah, but it really does illustrate they can all chew. There's no fairness doctrine anymore where you have to show both sides, and so you're gonna you're gonna pander to the consumer. I, I totally get that from I, a business I'm not, perspective. I'm not pandering. That's, not that's why we're I'm, shadow banned. <laughs> not you, but the networks can do that, right? Yeah, any now, network, now, any Twitter can do that. Facebook this, can do that. What's this bullshit going around about? Like, I don't quite get it. Uh, indict Fauci for what? <laughs> or you investigate it? What did he do? Oh, what did he do? I mean, what what do they want to look into him for? Just give me a quick tick, 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 tick. I mean, I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure it's because of the way they funded the NIH or something like that, and changing of the definition of gain of function to help cover their asses That's oh you mean like fauci might have helped create the covid bug is that the, it the funding of it yeah and then lying to Rand paul and congress and all them during his testimonies is it also have to do with like his covid response masks uh, lockdown schools i isn't it maybe I don't all right know. get away from hippie he's a okay. conspiracy theorist <laughs> is, isn't it isn't it about that stuff too I think so, yeah. And he, and he got some stuff wrong, right? Early on, uh, you don't need to wear masks. Mm -hmm. And then science changes. So when you look back on things, it looks like he got a lot of stuff wrong. Wait, he first is said he, you is, don't need to wear masks. Mm -hmm. And then he said you need to wear masks. Mm -hmm. And now, like, masks aren't all that effective. Cloth masks aren't because now we have Omicron. I mean, th that's the great thing about science. It constantly changes. The problem with Fauci is he's not a savior and he's not the boogeyman. He's a fucking scientist. 
but people want to plot him and how they think is oh he's the greatest he's he's saving humanity by you know with his decisions uh regarding covid but then you have the other side that wants to indict him and i just he's a human being that's a public employee very well paid one too which i know rubs people the wrong way the guy's doing his fucking job now, is he going to make mistakes? Sure. I mean, look at all the mistakes I make doing my job. Yeah, that's for sure. I know. I've been yeah. fired like five times this month. You fired, you're starting to fire yourself. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I lived through it. and You know, I, I'm no denialist. I, sure. I did what was asked of me. I wore the mask. I hunkered down. I, you know, I got the shots even though I had it before. But again, no denialist here. I need to see numbers. I need to see data. So when I see on the other side, Fauci saved I mean. tens of thousands of lives. How, how did he save tens of thousands of lives? You mean because we did a lockdown that saved lives? Did that save lives? Because I know when some places in America got sick of it, like Florida and Indiana and Ohio, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And they unlocked it while Washington and the CDC were still locking it and the governor of Michigan, that they have a lower death rate. Florida has a lower death rate than Michigan and more old people. Yeah. So where did it? What am I supposed to believe? Uh, you're never going to be able to prove that. That's proving a negative, right? Because so, we did a different. We did it a different way. So am I wrong, though? I mean, because you're a smart guy. It, do we have an answer that we all agree on no. that even data shows us, like, this was effective, this wasn't? No, you know, it's interesting. No? No, I would say no. There's no. really no perfect, you know, people will say, well, Florida's data collection was this way, and blah, 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 and, you know, there's just too many fucking variables, that no, and no one's going to be satisfied with the answer anyway. COVID's really interesting to me, because I feel like when it started, everyone's like, two-week shutdown, okay, this will be fun. One week, or one month, oh, God, this is kind of getting a little exhausting. It's going to go past June. And then by then, everyone's just started, there's a group started getting really exhausted by it. And now everybody's exhausted by it because it's been three goddamn years. And we were in an election year. Sure. And all that plays into it. That's, I just feel played. I, I, I like to feel that I'm a contributor to this society, that I'm not a problem. Hey, just do the best but you can. But my thing is this too, and we keep forgetting about this, and, and, and this may or may not play into whether or not you are uh, a, a conspiracist or not. But there's a financial factor behind this. You think about early on, you know, Bill Gates was always talking about, you know, overpopulation uh, and, and what needed to be done. And when Pfizer first introduced their vaccine, who's sitting next to the CEO of Pfizer in a C-SPAN interview but Bill Gates? Nobody thought that was creepy or wrong. I'm not wrong, but just weird or was 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 inappropriate. Everybody's overlooking the financial implication of, of COVID, the dollars that went through, the 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 debts that had a price tag on them. I mean, and so yeah, that to me that plays into it. And I do believe the data can be skewed. Mm -hmm. I, I do. And we get the same amount of debts. Mm -hmm. So how's this how's this vaccine really awesome? How does it, if COVID is less virulent, if it, if it doesn't kill like you have it, mm -hmm. it doesn't kill like the first strain did. And we now have these really effective vaccines that don't stop you from getting it or spreading it, but stops you from dying. Then why do we have the same death rate? It's a great question. This is bullshit. And so you, what you exactly. going to do, <laughs> stick a flag up there? Well, well, kids are cutting themselves and people are offing themselves and people are getting high and fentanyl's all up in this shit and they're yeah. dying and like, and the money's worthless and I'm supposed to be like, what? Never happened? Yeah. I'm just right in the middle here. I'm, I'm, I hate being manipulated in this big uh, fucking media and mainstream media and oddball far wing media. They're everybody trying to manipulate each other. Yep. I'm just sick of, <laughs> I'm sick of alarmist on both sides. Like with the Fauci example, that he's the greatest. Holy he's the worst. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said something was falling, bro. <laughs> uh, I'm even exhausted of the COVID conversation. Okay, well, you know what? Here's one. Play a little bit of that. This, this, just play that again, that cold open. This is from 12 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Karen was in the White House. Karen was basically the right-hand man to Mayor Dave Bing when the Q line, the M1 rail was promised us. And Here it is. I'm just stalling <laughs> so I you don't have to fire yourself wanted. again. We got 1718 on any night because they're broken. 
Light rail? We are at the proposed terminus of said light rail. Who's getting out of the car, parking it here, leaving the car, and driving downtown? You know this, this light rail they're talking about? From here to downtown? Five hundred million dollars. Is that the number one thing we need right now in Detroit? We need better police. The schools need improving. Pick Garbage pickup. The better ambulance service. We got a lot, lot of other things we could be spending that money on. Vonda, did anybody ask you for a light rail? No. <laughs> no. Cool. <laughs> okay. That was. I remember that, Charlie. That was a. That was twelve years ago. That was me going. Uh. I don't know. Now, I want to welcome in James Holman. Are you there, Jay? I am, Charlie. How are you, brother? I'm doing all right. James, well, is, Jay, I'm good, man. James is one of the smartest money men I know. He's the director of fiscal policy at the Mackinac Center for Public Policy. Now, James, here's the news. The Q line, this Q line is broke. It never made a nickel it's always been running in the red they promised us it was going to pay for itself they said it was private money but it was really public money and then when it was going bust year after year they kept putting it on the ballot and we kept saying fuck you dan gilbert and fuck you mike illich you take your choo-choo train and shove it up your ass and what do we get during COVID? quietly 15 million dollars funneled over there what happened last week 87 million more dollars in taxpayer money that we said no to is going to fund this albatross. James, they said back then when this thing was being funneled in, that it was going to create $7 billion in ancillary development. Did we get anything, James? Put this thing in perspective. You got a train that goes 3.3 miles that hardly transports anyone in the city of Detroit. Like, no, it's not going to uh, produce giant, massive... Uh, gains. In fact, that's one of the things that's weird about these whole transit projects, because they keep saying, look, you need to do this because it's going to generate tons of economic growth. And it's like, well, no, our transportation policy should be about getting people where they want to go better than alternatives. And most of these transit projects aren't going to do that. I think, uh, you know, with regards to paying for itself, no, these things are never going to pay for themselves, because um, I think uh, there's only one transit system in the entire nation that covers more than half of its expenses. And the argument being that it's going to spur in development that, uh, that would otherwise not happen, and, and so really uh, the gains show up someplace else. It just doesn't work like that. And and I yet, think that's the, the case in Detroit. And yet I mean, they, they push like it on us, dude. Them, but... Like, is, is this just part and parcel of what's going on, not only in this city, but in these counties and in this state? Like, massive giveaways that never pan out the way that it's presented through the mainstream media to the public. It's close. I mean, what I think is going on with this and with like a lot of the other uh, things that you're talking about is this willingness to fall for gimmicks. Like uh, if you can tell a plausible story, you know, a lot of, of lawmakers are going to be interested. I mean, it's not their money anyway, so they're more prone to say yes. Can you can you get good headlines? Can you make a case that this is really going to improve jobs? Uh, a lot of these things, you can answer that yes, but the question is, can you also answer that no? If you dug into it, if you started following, uh, following what's going on, if you really want to encourage growth in, in the state of Michigan, would you say yes to a lot of these things? The answer is probably not. And mostly what you'll see is that uh, you've got politically important people asking for favors and getting politicians to say yes to them. And that's not a Michigan thing. Like this is the reason why Boeing is the biggest recipient of business subsidies from the state of Washington, why oil and gas companies get a lot of money from the state of Louisiana. And here in Michigan, uh, you know, uh, major political, uh, politically important people ask for favors and tend to convince lawmakers to give it to them. Well, we do it like Noah, put it in, uh, let, me, let me back up. Freedom of information ask uh, of the city of Detroit. I say, since Mike Duggan has taken office, this, it's d empty down here, by the mm -hmm. way, all these subsidies we gave away. Give me a list and a value of what public subsidies went into what. For instance, the hockey arena or this skyscraper that hasn't grown a fucking inch yeah. 
in six months or uh Stellantis is uh, Mac Avenue assembly. G give me some kind of number. They don't have it. Now, I know this is what you do for a living. What about Michigan writ large? What do, what do you know? Yeah, so you asked me to try and track down all of the projects that happened in the city of Detroit. Yeah. And there's no definitive answer for that one because you've got them governments at different levels offering these things. Um, you know, you've got local stuff, you've got state stuff. I can track a lot of the state stuff because I know where they put it in their reports and I know where the reports are. And I was able to find well over 300 deals in the past decade. Uh, basically, if you're expanding in the, in the city of Detroit, if you've got a new apartment building to build or, or something else like that, odds are you can get some favors from the state of Michigan. These things can uh, go all over the board. Some of them are just like tax uh, abatements where it's like, we're going to let you pay less in taxes than other people would do. Other ones are we're going to exempt you from property taxes entirely. And then there's a bunch of them that are we're going to give you money uh, from other taxpayers. Cash. Um, where do we yeah, rank cash. as where or do we rank? Equivalents. Where do we rank as a state if you've even done this work in terms of just handing out cash? Yeah. No one subsidized business like the state of Michigan, um, we, oh, especially under the oh, pause program. It, pause it. What did you just say? No one subsidizes businesses like the state of Michigan. You mean hands out checks, cash? Hands out checks, hands out cash, short term cash over, or sorry, cash over the short term where we're just writing a check to uh, to businesses. A lot of other states do it via tax credits over extended period of time. Michigan's done that too in the in in the past, um, but we have. I mean, we're going to give out a billion dollars in this new um, SOAR program. Uh, no one else does that like that. Anything remotely similar. At best, you get these deal closing funds that deal with you know uh, hundred thousand to a couple of million, not hundreds of billions of dollars to select companies. Why is it important? Well, we're giving companies subsidies because they ask for it. And our lawmakers, who are supposed to be the gatekeepers to ensure that they're good stewards of taxpayer uh, money, are more interested in uh, putting out press releases about jobs than they are about being good stewards of taxpayer money. And I know this because like, a lot of economists use subtle and clever methods to try and understand like, if we're going to give these big companies special tax preferences, uh, does it pay off in, in economic growth? And some studies find uh, positive effects. Most of them find negative effects and none of them. And I mean this literally, none of them find large effects. So when our lawmakers thump their chest and say, look, this is the, the third industrial revolution coming to Michigan because we gave some <laughs> company your taxpayer money, that's not going to happen. And our lawmakers should be held accountable for these crazy promises that they uh, make when these uh, when they land these big projects. And and in the meantime, we're broke as a fucking joke. We're at the bottom of every metric in terms of uh, job losses and, and school achievement, like roads, uh, reliability of the electric grid. We, what the fuck are we doing in the meantime? Our patron saint over here. Let's just lay it out. Gilbert's. Oh, a there's a lot of. Go ahead. Uh, there's a lot of improvements that we could get. And the things that you're talking about is exactly what our lawmakers should be focused on. Um, you know, transportation. Look, we, we all use roads to get where we want to go. Why? Because it's the cheapest, fastest, and safest way of, of, of getting where we want, above alternatives. The, our lawmakers own, or sorry, uh, state government and local governments, they own the roads. It's re their responsibility to make sure they're in good working order. And we actually made a lot of progress on that. Uh, Electricity, we all need cheap, reliable electricity. And unfortunately, this drive for renewable energy has sacrificed both of those things, both the reliability and the, um, uh, and the price. So there's, there's all sorts of things we can do, uh, better policy decisions that we can make, and our lawmakers should be focused on those rather than trying to pick the right businesses to subsidy or subsidize. James, can I ask you a question? Uh, so when we talk about leaders, we have the executive branch, we have the legislative branch. The legislative branch should be an oversight for the decisions set forth for the executive branch. Should we be, I know we should be looking at both, but at the, at the end of the day, does either one of those hold a little more liability or responsibility than the other? Oh, that is a really good question because 
all of these things, all of these subsidies are duly enacted by law. And uh, regardless of, of who's in office, or, you know, if you look around the country, every state subsidizes businesses to some extent. It's a bipartisan endeavor. Um, so I think there's both culpability there. I would love it if law legislators in particular who don't receive as much political benefits from these deals started getting more skeptical. Um, executives, on the other hand, they they are the ones that usually sign the deals, are the ones who, uh, who, who get a hand out the deals. Most of these things are discretionary programs. That is, uh, in order for a company to collect these things, they have to have a deal with the state of Michigan, which means that some administrative agency has to sign onto those deals. Um, so I think that there's some different incentives around that facing the executive than there are for legislators. And I would love to see legislators be more skeptical. And maybe now, they will be. We have new people in the legislature I, I, coming in. Now Karen was in Karen was in the executive suite when the choo choo train was birthed. Karen, what was the talk and what was your thought when we were talking well, about this, this I I remember quite clearly because my contribution to the discussion was why are we attempting to duplicate two struggling transportation systems? We had smart we had DDOT, they were broken, they needed help, they were disconnected, um, and on a, on, a, on a route that really didn't go anywhere. Uh, I understand, I remember, you know, uh, Roger Pinsky was behind this conversation, Dan Gilbert was behind this conversation, uh, Norm White was uh, director of transportation at the time and was sent to several cities around the country to look at their light rail systems because the conversation was, should it be near the curb or should it be in the middle? And I just kept thinking like, and I, and I said it, and of course, you know, a lot of times I said things that weren't popular with the people that were pushing the agenda. Like, why are we having this conversation? Like, this is not, in my opinion, if you were really talking about addressing transportation needs for residents or even visitors, I just failed to see the, and, the value. And that would show up in the newspaper. And I, I remember, hmm. I remember distinctly because you would, you would do that. Then little, little dollops of bullshit would make their way to the newspapers. And then it would show up in the newspaper. And it wasn't really Karen Dumas talking about good public policy and spending money properly. It'd be like Karen Dumas went shopping at Burberry on a political trip or some, it was a, it was a concerted effort to yeah. fuck you up and take out your reputation because you were doing the things that James says we need public officials to do. But if everybody's going to be on the same train, forgive the analogy that I just did on purpose. <laughs> Look what we end up getting, right? Look what we get up at getting. Uh, we have a newsroom with cameras in from the billionaire who pulls more money than anybody. The guy was sued by Deutsche Bank for the housing collapse and the bullshit mortgages he was issuing, which 1.5 billion, there was validity to it, said the New York Supreme Court, but it was statute of limitations. After the collapse, $33 million settlement with the federal government for more bullshit mortgages, a three quarters of a billion dollar settlement in Texas, AMROC for ripping off proprietary information, that's Gilbert's company which by the way, they're back in court because it was appealed and there's a retrial, to be fair. But having said that, like Karen says, why is it going on the curb and not down the middle of the street? <laughs> because that touches these rich guys' property and raises the value. And now people in Escanaba are stuck with the bill on this? Well, I, that's what I want to ask you and, and James about. And, and I fully agree. I never was nuts about the plan. And one thing I want to point out about the video from the cold opening that we replayed here is that you're standing at Eaton Woodward, mm -hmm. which was where it was originally supposed to end at. And now it goes, what, three miles to mm -hmm. New Center. Um, but it's here now, right? It's, it's here. So the state is going to spend, is it $5 million a year to subsidize it? So $0.50 cents a person. I mean, is the what is the other option? Not subsidizing it and letting it fall into repair. I just don't, I don't know what to do about that. And I didn't know if you or James had an opinion or Karen. I'll take this, James and Karen, Thank you. and I'll give Thank it you, to Charlie. you. Um, yeah, what are you going to do? Let it rot? No, nope, nope. Horse left the barn. Yeah. The point is, in the future, here to force, open your fucking eyes, and I give, I cede the floor, James. Wait, Charlie. Yeah, uh, I mean, so. Transportation policy should be about getting people where they want to go cheaper, faster, and more effectively than alternatives. 
if you let the streetcar go away, is that actually going to change whether people get where they want to go faster, cheaper, and, and more effectively? I don't know that the answer to that question is yes. Uh, or sorry, I don't know if that's if, if that's going to have any noticeable influence mm -hmm. about transportation uh, behaviors in Detroit, which says a lot about the effectiveness of the streetcar. I get it. Oh, he's saying but subsidizing it is not going to achieve the goals of it either. So I'm not saying that you allow it to fall in disrepair because that just contributes to all the issues that we're already dealing with in the city of Detroit. How about if the commitment was made for it to be privately funded, that 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 promise be fulfilled? And, you know, again, it's it, it's already like you said, the, the, the train has already left the, the station. But what do you do with something that doesn't go anywhere? They're, the ridership mm -hmm. isn't there. It's just not. Is that a population issue? Is it because it just doesn't serve the needs of the people in that 3.3 mile area? I mean, these are these are these are hindsight, you know, Monday morning quarterback questions that should have been addressed prior to. I think it's important to say that, you know, when the mayor and these billionaires hire garbage hipsters from the media who are willing to say whatever you want them to say to this community so they can pick up a paycheck that's not earned, yeah. Yeah. that's misleading the people. I know who you are, I've sat with you, and I'm, man, I'm disappointed. Mm -hmm. And I think what Karen and James are saying is what would it hurt to pull the, pull the cars off the tracks? Doesn't hurt you to have the tracks there and take that 85 million plus the other 15 million and put it into electric buses and whatnot. But you don't cut ribbon on that. Yeah. Which leads me, Karen, to the latest. James, you might not know. There's a special hearing today. The Detroit City Council is supposed to be on vacation, and yet they're having a special hearing about the towing contracts. Oh, God. Now, Again? let me take you back to what's going on with the towing contracts. Remember they raided City Hall? Oh, yeah. Remember, there was somebody went to prison, Spivey, Spivey and, yeah. and then there's a couple of other targets. And then it was outed that the mayor was going around and telling people that there's a FBI snitch <laughs> inside the whole deal. And now we're having a special hearing. And then Rob Snow, great reporter, Detroit News, excellent, saying that there's new filings from the corruption bureau <laughs> of the FBI and the and U.S. Attorney's Office into something or other. <laughs> Wake up, people! What is the, so? What is the hearing about today? Then, like, what? Something about the contracts. I, you mm. know, I wish I was sitting there. We got to do yeah. this, but we'll we'll be on it because yeah. everybody calls Karen. Yeah, Karen, what's it about? <laughs> You're on I'll the spot. find out. But it's it, it, it's crazy though. Charlie and I were laughing, kind of talking over the weekend that the number of people within the administration who complain about the administration privately but promote the administration publicly. It's, 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 it's very disappointing. And again, like Charlie said, these people are doing it for a check. I'm not mad at anybody for, you know, attempting to, you know, <laughs> generate revenue, but at what expense? Doesn't your integrity mean something? It doesn't anything mean something? And what are you doing for the people who look to you for solutions, for answers and impact on their quality of life? Keep the check, keep the check. Just know that we care that's about what you. Doing. Yep, that's what they're doing. And speaking of checks, I'll tell you how we get checks. <laughs> One is because of <laughs> Luke Nowacki from Pinnacle Wealth, 248-663-4748. Rational, personalized financial advice. He handles me. We talk about inflation, interest rates. What's the move? Stocks, bonds. What's going on with corporate earnings? What's the Fed going to do? What does this mean? How is gold valued? Should you get gold? I have no idea. Call Luke. I'll just tell you one thing. He told me I'd steer clear of crypto. I already knew that, but when Luke's telling me, I know I feel good about it because I get advice. I get a strategy. Luke Nowacki at Pinnacle Wealth, 248-663-4748. Legacy Partners, when you watch TV and you're bombarded, bombarded with this insurance ads, promise to save you money. You really don't. So I've been telling you about uh, how you can get help with Medicare, and I'm telling you how Legacy Partners can save you money on all your insurance needs, your home, your car, your boat, your business, your motorcycle, whatever it is. They're independent, so they shop. They shop. Mm -hmm. They're not profiting off of you. No cost to you. They shop between 7 and 10 carriers for the best insurance and the best deal, and uh, when you get their quote, you're going to be mad. 
because I save money, Mark save money. I'm going to tell you, well, save money. Here's what I need you to do. Call 586-209-4106 for honest, good insurance advice. 586-209-4106. Legacy Partners, that's my insurance carrier. And I got their number locked in my phone. Really? And you know who saved money? Who? XG Service Group. Oh, they're the best. We've been telling you about it. They manage internet, VOIP, Wi-Fi, design, installation, security systems, cameras and access control. By the way, when you're their client and something happens, their phone goes off. They got you. They got you. You're getting, you're getting help right away. This is not some bullshit fly by night. This is XG Service Group. Digital menu boards and drive through systems. Call Matt Yaskovitz at 734-245-4100 for free consultation. 734-245-4100. That's Matt. And they went to Legacy. The whole business. The whole business. Good. So thousands and 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 thousands. Hold on. And thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. Hold on. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm not fucking kidding you. Yes, Karen. Never mind. I know you don't like when I do this. No, go on. No, you have to. I was just I was, I was just, you know, I'm constantly looking to see you when you're talking politics. And so there's a, an opinion piece in the New York Times saying Gretchen Whitmer rejected false choices. All Democrats should. And it's being looked at as a primer for her next political move. But it totally counters everything. Like, when you know, when we're talking about the things that she's that she did that weren't in the best interest of everybody. I don't know. Never she mind. Reject- just, the game continues. The game there's, continues. There's That's a reason I point. left that paper. That paper gone off the rails, man. And if you I know, know people that, saying- they know it. It's going off the rail. They, uh, everybody has choices, all Democrats should, uh, blah, 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 blah. Mr. Which, uh, in many ways, Michigan offers a microcosm of American politics and includes a diverse population. For Democrats, much of the debate about running and winning big northern industrial states is what we do. There's a model for running effective campaign. Illustrated the model in Michigan this year, Whitmer did with her midterm victory. Uh, she spent $100 million. Yeah, it was having more money and running against worse and, and, candidates. And, and, and I'm saying, saying a 14 year exactly shouldn't carry a rape, about. baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's that, what's that what Karen? We were just talking about. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's exactly what we were talking about. Everything is positioned, everything is poised, everything is performative, everything is. In, mm. <laughs> That's what we were just talking about. Huh. Okay. Well, Anyway, okay, so I'll, I'll give that a read. I, I don't know. I know the New York Times doesn't even know what time it is here or who uh, got the endorsement from whom. I know. I know they fly by night. I, I know the players. I know the players they talk to. I know they phone it in. If you want to cover this state and this place is important, you should move here. It's what any reputable reporter does. You want to write about the border, you go to the border. You want to write about Michigan, you come to Michigan. That's. But I think this was... This, this is an opinion piece written by a person that that uh, is at Impact Research and was a pollster for her during the campaign. Uh, well, that's, that's my wow. point. Wow. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Wow. You could all call me, but it, it ain't like that no more over there. It's not like that. They got more reporters on the borders of Ukraine, the New York Times, than they do our own border. Wow. Where are you at, man? This is it's beyond politics. Be honest. Not a fucking organ. The game continues. Speaking of competency and, and honesty and ethics, Barry Ellen Tuck at ADR 248-318-9424 for a consultation on public and private construction projects, procurement, government compliance, and information technology. Get the job done right on time, on budget, ADR. Call Barry Ellen Tuck again. A non-charge consultation, 248-318-9424. Now, do we have somebody on the phone? Yeah, we do. Let's see. Uh, hello? 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 Hi, I believe it's Vince. Hey, Vinny, who's this? Vinny? Yeah, I'm the, we're, the guy, we're, the, a little, we're the little media group up in Ottawa that give you the media, Charlie. Media, what's the name of your media group, Vinny? v and It's just a small thing. I'm Lou Gordon's godson, buddy. You're I'm Lou Gordon's Detroit. godson. You mean yeah. the late great Lou Gordon? Oh yeah, buddy. Yeah. The, the guy that invented the late night talk show. 
Yeah, I was raised in Detroit, buddy. When you see VNA on your chat, that's us. Huh. Okay. You know, we're, we're disciples of you and Lou, buddy. You're the greatest, both you guys. Oh, Lou's long gone, you know, God rest his soul, but he really laid it out. I mean, th there are no Bill Bonds without a Lou Gordon. There's no, there's no doubt about that. There's, there's nobody. Yeah, and, and, and buddy, you, you're, you're just like that. You're just like that. You tell, tell it how it is, like it is even the name of your show. No bullshit news, buddy. You're there. I appreciate that, man. So what's going on in Canada? What can I do for you, Vin? Nothing. I just called Red because, you know, Red Red is kind of like I, I knew didn't actually know him that good, but I knew who he was from the old days, so I called him to get in touch with you, you know. Okay. I man. just hope, you know, you're talking about all these big politicians driving up in a limo. That's why me and Amy, the preacher at our church, who's kind of like that black preacher you interviewed a while back, and he said on Christmas you should, you should be, you know, be generous and give things, and we're not doing nothing with this, and it's perfect because... And he noticed that you're that you're that you weren't wheeling around your Fleetwood anymore. So, so what do you got? What are you talking about? You got something for us? Yeah, I'm, we we we're donating you a, a, a eighty nine limousine, a stretch of Van Cleef edition. It's got a convertible top over the show through the whole nine yards, Charlie. Wait, an eighty nine stretch limo Cadillac? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you say it's a rag top? It's. Well, the front is the front. Uh, is a fox rag top yeah you know it looks like a convertible over the chauffeur so does the does well red's got a picture of it he didn't show you the picture no i did red was telling me some guy was calling but i didn't want to know nothing because i don't <laughs> i want to be no bullshit news so you got me a 89 limo <laughs> okay what's what's in that thing a 450 what's going on in there no 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 it's 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 got a it's got it don't got the 425 like yours had and then it's got a smaller five five something you know, five point something or other, but it, it's okay, man. It's good enough to live around town. You just can't leave the park. There's no place to park it in front of your studio there by American, you know. <laughs> I, I, I was raised in Detroit, buddy, so I know. Well, we, God damn, we got a news truck, man. We got a stretch limo news truck, a news Karen. Limo. <laughs> Look at that news limo. We're going to get, we're going to get a, that bitch wrapped. <laughs> we should. We should get a mask to do <laughs> that doesn't connect anything. Just a giant yeah, we, mask. we get a gigantic phony satellite mask. Exactly. It really doesn't do anything, but it looks cool. Yeah, we, we're, we, we're, what we are, Charlie, up here, there's DNA. I belong to the press gallery, you know, the one. But we, we, what we do is get people that, that go in there like you, real ones that do real reporting. We try and teach them how to do it. You're our disciple, buddy. Right. My man, okay, so listen, your, your connection's bad, so I'll get in touch with you. You're in Ottawa, right? Yep. Okay, and I'm in Detroit. So how are we gonna how are we gonna get this Cadillac? I could put it on a rail car for you. Red said he'll come up here and pick it up. Mmm. You'll never see Red again. He'll go <laughs> cross country. <laughs> yeah, like Red's is gonna. There, is there a rail yard there in Windsor that you can pick it up at, Charlie? Uh, maybe we take the train up to Ottawa, brother, and uh, you know, man, drive her back. Is that legal? Will Trudeau let us in the country? <laughs> Well, let me tell you, you're speaking of Trudeau letting people in the country, you were right, but you were wrong about, you know, up here, the people that you saw crossing the Rio Grande, buddy, yeah. they're coming in at Quebec. There's this place called Roxham Road, and they're wandering around here, you know, in Ottawa, because, well, Galt and Ford don't want them in, but Trudeau wants them in, so he lets them in, with no questions asked, at Roxham Road. And they get more money, more Trudeau bucks than what Biden's giving. So now, ho now hold on, and you're going you're to have to wait for this, Vinny, because my column, which appears in the Detroit News on Wednesdays, Karen's on Tuesday, mine is, I'm going to take a look at that. Because the fact of the matter is this. We have a treaty with Canada, which I correctly reported. If you show up to a port of entry and you ask for asylum from the United States side, they'll turn you around. Now, you are all talking about illegal immigration coming through Quebec. The thing is, Trudeau himself is in negotiations with the United States government to expand that treaty all across the border, whether it's a legal port of entry or not. Trudeau is backing away from that because Canada, drum roll please, Canada is overwhelmed with illegal asylum seekers in the last five years. Are you ready? Canada yep. has suffered. <laughs> 50,000 human beings looking for asylum, but not through the port of entry. 50,000 people, ladies and gentlemen, 50,000 people. 
We get that every week at the southern border alone. Please. What it is is the, the uh, premiers of the province, like the governor, they bitch about it. They're all happy with it because it's part of his agenda, buddy. Trust me. And you can see it with your own eyes. Like the you know, your old friend there is the one that... Trudeau recently told the media that he says negotiations are going well with the United States to expand this treaty, and yet the United States is in no way sitting at a table with the Mexicans or the Guatemalans to fashion out the same thing. That, that was no the whole sense. point. You brought that up last week. I keep thinking about that. That just seems like such a diplomatic solution, or at least a starting place, but there just seems to be no will to meet. That's something politicians are paid to do. Yeah. Now, unlike well, Vinny, I'm getting a lot of blowback from Canada. You dumbass, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Sound very Canadian of them. Oh, I know what I'm talking about, eh? Right. Trudeau will say he's in the ghost story, but he's a liar, man. He just does stuff to virtue signal and to make, you know, to get people to like him. But the hey, Vinny, Vinny, do you guys get that new uh, King Charles money yet? <laughs> did you get the new King Charles money yet? No, I no, I don't. I don't trust that guy. You know, with his WEF connection. That's your king, brother. You know. that's your king. Show some respect. Do, do not speak of the monarchy this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I guess he won't. All right, Vin. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let you go, man. I'll be in touch. We're gonna get that limo. That is awesome. The, the NBN limo news truck. Go ahead, Karen. You gotta call Legacy Partners and get it insured. Oh. Oh, I'm going to call Legacy Partners and get it insured. <laughs> and I'm going to call Luke and ask if this is a good investment. <laughs> I can see you riding around town in a limo, Charlie. I can see that. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to call Bernie and get me, myself some wireless internet. Yeah, and put the mask on there. And Bernie get, will put the mask yeah, on. Yeah, put the mask on <laughs> well, there. And who yeah. else we got here? <laughs> a hall? I don't know. <laughs> He'll do something. He gonna, you know what he's going to do? He's going to help me find a big, long garage. There you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You can mortgage out very well. And you can put Coney kits in the truck. Oh, beautiful. Oh, there you go. And you know what? I'm going to call ADR to figure out which roads to drive on and which not to. It's one-stop shopping. <laughs> Thanks, Vinny. Thank you, Vin. Anybody else on there? Uh, let's see. I, I know we don't have call. We don't know. 7345NB News. Hello? Who's on the phone? No one. Okay, so, we got to get that fixed. Sounds so welcoming, Mark. God. <laughs> Who's on the phone? <laughs> what? I'm balancing a lot of things. He's not like somebody's parent. <laughs> Who are you calling? What, what do you want? want? We got a lot more news, but we're not going to do it. I want to thank James Holman from the Mackinac Center for Public Policy for being on here and telling us what the ripoff is. Thank you, James. Thank you, Charlie. If you ever need a ride from the airport, I'm going to have a limo. <laughs> You have to check out that undercarriage, too. Like you always got to check that out with the caddies. Yep. All right, Karen, last words? Everybody just start paying attention. I mean, seriously, just don't fall for the okey-doke. If you hear it, question it, no matter where it's coming from. I mean, we, we shouldn't be in this position, Charlie. We really should not be in this position. Check out Karen's comment Detroit News tomorrow. Uh, like us uh, wherever you get your podcast. You know, give me the five-star review and all that. And uh, Chris Cuomo tonight, mm -hmm. 8 o'clock. From the mobile studio in my driveway. <laughs> All right. Talk to you Thursday.